Hello everyone and welcome to today's cryptocurrencies update. I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July, even if you don't celebrate it wherever you are. I hope you had a wonderful Monday and let's have a look at the price charts because uh, are we selling at the bottom and buying at the top like so many people do or the stupidest thing I've heard today. I will come back when things have stabilized and normalized. What is stabilized and normalized and who are you to determine that? Um, that said, I prefer to buy low and sell high. So it seems like we're closing in on a meaningful bottom. Remember, once we have a meaningful bottom, we're going to track for potential of five waves higher. But after three waves lower, expect at least three waves back up. Why do I say three waves lower? because all the cryptocurrencies have so far done three waves lower. All right. So again, the parameters I am still tracking is for five waves up. Hasn't happened yet. And we need higher highs, higher lows. Hasn't happened yet, though we might put in the first higher low. We need to get the breakout above critical price levels that then need to hold as support because the critical price level is resistance. I'm tracking both. Hasn't happened yet. And most indexes are in not indexes, cryptocurrencies have price below most of the moving averages, the 20, the 50, the 200, and that the 50 is below the 200, the 20 is below the 50, and the 10 is below the 20. That is a full blown bear market. And of course, then also including Ichimoku Cloud. That then makes the traffic light for those that remember my work from um, uh, days past. I haven't showed those charts in a while, but I can show you for Bitcoin quite easily. Um, and all of that needs to, of course, fall in place. And then we can say a low is in. It doesn't matter if things bottom at, say, for um, Avalanche here at $10 and it rallies to 1000 If you get in at 40 or 50 it's all about risk management. If you can get in at 40 and 50 for very little risk, then that is much better than getting in at 10 for very high risk, meaning a losing trade. We want to minimize the losses and maximize the gains. So Avalanche is rallying nicely. Um, yesterday, I said... Uh, up all the potential bearish wave counts here, which are still valid. Uh, one, two, three, four, five set up to the downside to about five dollars. Uh, that would match very well with the CSA, five is one, all those good things, uh, so to say, target so. Uh, but the first warning for the bears is above 2220. That is, I believe, last week's high, the June 25th high, sorry, the June 25th high. If that is this green four here, if we get above it, then we're making a higher high. And of course, the recent low here this week was then a higher low compared to um, what we had here in mid-June. So that is then the first sequence. That then means that the low here in mid-June was most likely alternative shown here as five of C. And then we've done three waves lower. Expect at a minimum three waves back up because this large correction can if the future so decides to turn into a triangle, a 333, or a flat, a 335. If it's a flat, then we should target at least, I think, about 120, 125. If it's a triangle, we should target about 100. So there's plenty of upside opportunity. If this is the start of a new bull run, we're going to go to new all-time highs. Bottom line, all three are looking for much higher prices. The first two will eventually lead to lower prices, but that's why we keep raising stops, take profits along the way, etc. Okay. Whereas the other one will look at declining prices much, much further down the line once the big impulse has completed. Binance coin. Binance coin looks pretty good as well. Also, here I have this potential. It is still in the charts, wave five of five of five of C4 down to about 160, somewhere around there. We can still reach it plus or minus 20. That hasn't changed. If we continue to make higher highs, remember the 209 level has held all the time. Yes, we stabbed below it here uh, late June, but not close to below it. It has held on a closing basis, so that is kudos to the bulls. Now we need to break back above this June 25th high, which was at 245. We get above it, then we have a first sequence of a higher high and a higher low. And then we have the potential for wave four having already completed here in mid-June. Again, you can see if this is then a wave five to new all-time highs, what kind of um, upside you're really missing to determine if this is the case. This is still a far cry 
of a bull market. Let me simply go, I think, uh, this, no, not this one, this is the chart here. This one, look here at the chart where we are. It's quite nice. We're above the 10 and the 20, but still below the 50, 200 day and Ichimoku cloud. Okay. So we're not even back above 270. So if this is going to go to about 1,000, potentially 1,500, then we're really miles off and we haven't established even a bullish uptrend, which is what we're going to look for. Okay. So please remember where we are trend wise. Same here for Bitcoin. Bitcoin did break below 19,500. That was the first warning for the bulls, which is where you probably would say, you know what, um, I'm going to step aside here and let the market decide. So here is then the bearish up possibility that we're still going to go to about 17,000, four way five of five of five of four, so to say. Alternatively, we bottomed here late June. We need to break again above about 22,000, which is the June 25th high. Okay, if we do that, then we have most likely a failed fifth here at the June 25th of, uh, yeah, June 25th low, I believe it is, or 30th, whatever date it is, it doesn't matter, the low of this month here. If we break below that low, then of course it opens the door to 12,700. Okay, <clears throat> if we break above 22,000, we have a first warning for the bears that we have a potential for a failed fifth because that would be way five of five of C of four. And a field fifth of fifth at that wave degree is not unusual. Please keep that in mind. Same here for Binance coin. Okay, if Binance coin starts rallying higher, we will then also have a field fifth of a fifth of a fifth wave. That doesn't surprise me, especially if this is then a larger bull market. Please remember that we've done then done three waves lower. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay, that is then the high here in November. We have an A, a B. Sorry, this B got a little bit transposed here. B and a C. Okay, so this would then potentially be five of um, five of C. If we break lower, but then we've done an A, B, C. So after three waves lower, we should expect at the minimum three waves back up because, as I said, the future might decide that we are only dealing with a very complex, drawn out, bigger picture correction, which is of the 333 kind. It would be a triangle or of the 335 kind. If we have a triangle, expect somewhere a rally to about 50,000. Okay. If we have a flat, expected to challenge the all-time highs and then we get the decline both for the triangle and the flat the flat will bring us back to 20,000 the triangle will be of a triangular fashion making a higher low way too little to data to determine alternatively we have a bull market meaning we're going to go to 100,000 all three options point to higher prices so that's great now we just simply have to track how high it's going to go so we can't guarantee yet new all-time highs but it is very possible that it's a triangle or a flat. Can't state it often enough. Again, after three waves lower, expect at the minimum three waves back up. Here's one I haven't uh, shared with you in a while. Curve. Curve looks complete to the downside. But we need to see it go back above $1.46, somewhere around there. Then this decline that started in late May cannot subdivide anymore. We have cleaned five waves lower. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five. For everybody to see, anybody who still has problems with edit wave, this is, I think, one of the most beautiful five waves uh, on such a sh uh, short time frame you will ever see. So again, we have technically done three waves lower. Blue A, blue B, blue C. Picture perfect. This wave five here in red can still subdivide. And this is one of five, two of five, three of five, four, five of five if it wants to. Now, considering we all already went to 60 cents, it's very hard to see this go much lower because then we go to negative. So the chances are that we already have a low in place and that we're going to rally to new all-time highs. Alternatively, once again, we've got three waves lower. Expect at the minimum three waves back up. 
If we do three ways back up as a flat, we're probably going to go back to about five, six dollars. If we're going to do three waves um, higher as a triangle, we're probably going to go back to the resistance zone here about three, six. And alternatively, new all time highs. So all of them are looking higher for either the B wave of a flat or a triangle or the new impulse. Again, we need to have full confirmation. It's not there yet. Here is Ethereum. Yesterday, I put in this potential for a impulse lower down to about 6 to 500, 645, 25. Alternatively, we already bottomed here in mid June for potentially here um, late June for a field fifth, whatever you want to call it. It's fine. But we need to see, of course, price make new highs. So, first order is back above 1250. We haven't done it yet. Okay. We're still only at 1160. So we did hold 1,030. We stepped below it once or twice, but it held. So that was the first warning for the bulls, and we need to see it close below it. So on Sunday midnight, London time, it needs to close below it so that then, or whatever day it is, I'm just saying Sunday, but on any day, midday, um, midweek is fine. We need to close below it. We haven't, so it's holding, so that's good. So then it's potential uh, that we have completed already the three-wave decline. Also here for Ethereum, here's the top in November, an A, a B, and a C. So also here, same deal. After three waves lower, expect at the minimum three waves back up. Okay. So again, this is as close to a bottom as we're going to get. Alternatively, we're going to subdivide lower one more time, and that'll be it. And then we simply cascade our criteria to the downside as well because then we have of course the wave ones twos threes and fours here in gray that we can use as cutoff levels that we should get back above to set up this process of higher highs and higher lows for now even compared to where we were on friday we're still a bit in no man's land between 1030 and 1250 but we have all these positive divergences as i mentioned that's the condition now we need to see price trigger. It's moving the right direction, which is up. Um, again, um, it fits with this notion I get from somebody. We'll return when things have stabilized. Markets are inherently instable. That's the whole point of a stock market. They're instable because they are multifaceted. They're stochastic, all those things. And if it's a stochastic system, it's pretty much not stable, um, meaning we have all these constant price swings. Um, anyway, um, moving on to Polygon or Matic. Also here, tracking the potential for five waves lower down to this ideal target zone of about two cents. It doesn't have to be that way. We do need to get back above resistance, which is at about 70 cents. We might need to lower it to about 65 cents. That's fine. We'll see it when we get there. If we break below, again, support here at about 38 cents, then I'm going to look for this impulse lower. Okay. Again, we need to make a high high. Better sooner than later. How about Solana? Solana is doing nicely as well. Solana needs to rally back above resistance at 4270. Okay, so it broke above resistance here at 3425 yesterday um, on Monday, and it is holding yesterday. So that is now support. That's a good sign. That's what I like to see. So we can raise the support now to here. Turn it green because resistance is red and support is green. I don't know why it is, but I think that's the preferred color. And then we might have again a potential field fourth um, here, or we simply relabel things and say this is three, this is four, this is three, this is four, and then here is five. Okay, so it's always a little bit open to interpretation on what exactly is three, what exactly is four. But we know it once we break back above this June 25 high at 42.70. Okay, get back above 42.70, then we can't subdivide lower in a one, two, three, four, five impulse because wave two here is not allowed to go back above the start of wave one here in green, which of course starts here at the end of wave four. Okay, so that is then a very nice, clean, clear cutoff where you say if it breaks above it, we can't have a one, two, three, four, five. We can still move lower in 
uh, mysterious way, so to say. It still can, but this one, two, three, four, five is clearly off the table, which increases the odds that this whole decline is complete. And then once again, we have an A, a B, and a C wave lower, question mark, then for wave four. Because as with all the other cryptocurrencies, after three waves lower, expect at the minimum three waves back up. If it's a flat, expect it to challenge the 200s. If it's a triangle, expect it to challenge somewhere in the mid 100s. If it's a new impulse, we're going to get to new all time highs. Very, very simple. But we have no information at all which of these it's going to be. We'll track it, we'll monitor it, and we'll adjust it accordingly. From a trading perspective, you place your stops accordingly, you take profits accordingly. If you don't know how to do it, please sign up for my crypto trading alert service. You'll get an email every day, about 4.45 Pacific Standard Time in the afternoon, it tells you what to buy, what to sell, what to hold, if you so desire to act on those signals. Super easy, you don't have to listen at all to me yapping about all these wave counts. Last but not least, here is of course uh, Bitcoin. Uh, let's have a look here quick. Bitcoin is setting up for a big move. But it needs to, of course, break out. So we have the parameters. Break above 22,000. Uh, then we're going to go higher. If we break below this 19,500 yet again, we're going to go lower to 17,000 to 12,000 potentially. Why do we have a big move? Because the Bollinger Bands are tightening. If the Bollinger Bands tighten, it means we're setting up for a big move. Here in May and June, they were tightening, as you can see here in green. And we got a big move to the downside. So there is potential once again for a big move to the downside. That's why we need to see this cutoff above 22,000 because then we get a nice big move to the upside. But please look where Bitcoin is in relationship to its moving averages. In red is the 200 day, that's a straight line down, that's the long term bear market. 50 day straight down, and below the 200 day, this is a long term bear market. But we're back above. Uh, the 10 day and about the 20 day, which is at 20,274. So, short term, we're in an uptrend. So, please know the difference in trend, where we are in the trend. Short term in an uptrend, intermediate to long term in a downtrend. Again, if you would zoom out, know what the difference is with a bull market. I'll probably have to zoom out even more. Here, for example, is a bull market where we essentially are above the 50-day, the 200-day, the 10 and the 20-day. This is an entirely different setup. So with that, you should take appropriate risk management uh, actions. One is position sizing, two is stops. In an environment like this, you buy hands down full position. In an environment like this, you buy tentatively a smaller position and with tighter stops. Okay. Where you place your stops is depending on your risk appetite and your long-term perspective, for example. Those need to be taken into consideration. But given where the market is here, you should not be as aggressive as you are here. It's all about risk management because chances of higher prices are much better in a rally like this than they are as a rally like this. Amateurs, and part of my French dumbasses, don't know uh, the difference between proper risk management and losing all your money. The only concern they have is higher prices and making as big profit as possible. Though the only concern you should have is losing as little money as possible. I cannot state it often enough. That brings me back to the notion of where do we determine things have stabilized? That is probably for most people when we are here. This is where they finally decide this is stable, which is actually quite unstable. Again, markets are unstable. That's the whole point. They move on different time frames, quite largely in different directions. So please remember that we cannot decide when a market is stable or unstable or has stabilized enough to re-enter. At a minimum, I might say back above the 200 day moving average, but you don't have to worry about all those um, type of opinions because it's quite an opinion. As long as I mentioned to you, you use appropriate risk management. This way, if you have a small position size, you can still benefit 
from the potential new leg higher. And if not, you have taken a very small risk because you only appropriated, let's say, 25% of what you newly, normally would put in here. That is absolute key to proper trading. Trading is three steps forward, one to two steps back, meaning you will have losses along the way. But the one or two steps back will always be less than three steps forward. And hopefully those steps back will even be smaller than the steps forward. That is trading in a nutshell. Again, can't do it. You don't know how to do it. Uh, then please sign up for my crypto trading alert service and we'll smash it out of the park with appropriate risk management. Always didn't use setting stop levels, taking appropriate chips off the table when things start to rally, all that good stuff. And that's really all there is to it. It's very simple, binary if then scenarios. Couldn't say it more often. Again, tentatively watching for breakouts. It starts to look good. It starts to look good. Looks like we're closing in on a meaningful bottom. But once again, if we get the meaningful bottom based on these parameters, five waves up, higher highs, higher lows, breakout that needs to turn into support, etc., then we still, of course, need to acknowledge that we might only be in a much larger bounce, which I've shown you for all these cryptocurrencies can still lead to very nice profits. So we're starting to look good. I like it but we have still some work to do. We haven't even broken above any of the initial breakout levels. 2220 for Avalanche, 245 for Binance Coin. Okay, 245 for Binance Coin. Bitcoin needs to get back above 22,000. Curve needs to get back above $1.46, but it starts to look good. Look also how Curve is breaking back above this downtrend line. So Curve could be the canary in the proverbial coal mine which of all cryptocurrencies i list here the most bullish ethereum needs to get back above 1250 okay still holding the critical 1030 level matic or polygon needs to get back above about 65 cents solana needs to get back above 4270 that's where we are looking for we haven't gotten there yet if we do, then we have a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. We might have the potential for some failed fifth of fifth of fifth of C waves. But then we've completed three larger waves lower. We're going to look for three larger waves higher at the very minimum. With that, thank you so much for listening. Take care, trade safe, and I'll see you all on Friday.